Welcome to the Live Fit Listens podcast, a safe space of growth, personal development, and overall wellness with your host, Olivia Catania, diving into the realms of all things health, conscious living, mental expansion, and much more. This podcast is designed to help you evolve into your best self and live fit. Let's get into the show. Hello, you guys. What's up? Welcome back to the Lift It Listens podcast. Today, we're on episode 80 freaking one, which we all know what that means. That means it is a Q&A. I feel like if you're new, it might sound a little random, like what does it mean? But basically, every 10 episodes, I do a Q&A slash like advice session. But the first episode I did it on was episode 11 rather than like episode 10, which would make sense. So it's every like next 10th episode so it's always like ends in one like next time it's going to be the 91st 101st episode etc and I can't believe I feel like I say this like frequently but just every time like I can't believe we're already at like 80 freaking episodes like 81 episodes that's a freaking lot that's a lot and I think we're coming up on two years of the podcast and just of having this creative outlet which is insane that's kind of a that's quite a long time honestly and I feel proud that I've been able to stay consistent with this for quite some times but anyway I am back here in Utah. I got back from upstate New York a few days ago when I was there visiting for the week. If you missed my last episode, I basically overshared, but I just basically let you guys in on a lot. It was a very vulnerable and raw episode. Um, I got emotional with you guys. I was, I was pretty open and I just basically shared things from my own childhood and things that I'm even dealing with now as I'm, you know, 24 years old that still get to me. And I basically just did a whole episode on just like coping with the feelings of growing up and such. So if you feel like you're in a similar space or may resonate, just want to let you know that I do have that episode. That was episode 80. And today, this morning, I don't know why I feel called to share, but like this morning I had to go get my dad from the airport because he also now is here visiting. So I've been with him a lot, but so I had to go pick him up from the airport last night. I just didn't get to go to bed until pretty late. And so I woke up really groggy and sometimes it's like really hard. That's when it's like challenging to feel, you know, have the willpower to continue on with your normal like morning routine. And I'm going to be honest, I just didn't do my morning routine and I just felt like super foggy. And I just was like, you know what, I'm going to go for a walk. It was like 9am at that point. And I just feel like usually well, just, I feel like it's easy when you don't stick with like your morning routine and what you want to do in the morning to just kind of like fall off for the rest of the day, because I'm a big believer that like how you start your day dictates the rest of your day. And I could have just not done anything and just like, you know, tried to go about my day, but I was like, you know what, let's try to go for a walk. Like just because you didn't, you know, start your first steps on the best foot, like doesn't mean that you can't save the morning and then save the day. And so I just went for a walk. It was pretty sunny out. And I listened to a podcast, a few podcast episodes, by Catherine Zin- um, Zinkina. I love her last name. I literally just said her name because I love her name, Catherine Zinkina. I love the name. But anyways, she also is mainly Manifestation Babe and I've been loving her podcast episodes. They've been really giving me just like such a spark again and they give me so much hope and like that in and of itself realigned me so much and I did my ma- uh, my affirmations in the mirror and I, it's just insane how much it helps me. And then yesterday I actually did do a very in-depth morning routine. I meditated. I literally did everything. I meditated outside. I journaled. I had my Christmas crystals with me. I did like affirmations, gratitude. I, oh, and I did card pulls. Like, I feel like I just, I did like a full hour session yesterday of like energetic alignment and it felt so freaking good. And I say this all because it actually kind of leads me into my gratitude. I feel like lately I've been in kind of like this self reflection period. I feel myself kind of in a hermit stage a little bit, but I can feel myself being in the process of kind of like self-realization, if that makes sense. Like, I feel like I've kind of been sitting with myself on things. I've been like mentally reflecting on where I'm at in life, you know, where I want to be going from here. I feel like it's like, again, because we're about to enter the fourth quarter of the year. I'm kind of thinking of like, you know, is this where I want to be? what can I do to kind of get closer to where I want to be, et cetera. And I just feel like I've been like addressing my habits and things like that. I feel like I've been going through a reset and just kind of reflecting inwards what I'm bringing to the table. Am I tapping into my full potential? Like just kind of doing a, a quality control check. You know what I'm saying? And I feel 
just like thankful overall that I kind of always have this itch within me. Like I, there comes to a point, like, yes, I go through my phases a hundred percent where I feel more productive than others, where I feel more inspired than others, where I feel like I'm making more progress than other times. But I feel like no matter what, even if I'm in like a steady state where I'm in more of like um, an introspective period or I'm in a reflection period, or I'm not really in a state of action, I still love that. I always, at some point, my soul really always urges me at some point to keep evolving. Like again, even if I feel like I've been kind of coasting for a bit for whatever reason, my soul like always continuously, my soul always comes back around to inch me along the path of evolution. And I love that I have that just kind of intrinsic itch for personal development. It's like, I have so much faith in myself that I won't ever get stagnant or get really far away from my quote unquote dream life because I know my soul literally wouldn't ever allow me just to stay stuck, stay stagnant, or just like continuously not live up to my potential and I just really love that I have that about myself and like lately I've been feeling more purposeful and have more of a direction lately from that's coming from this like introspection and kind of realignment and like resetting my sights on where my direction is that I want to be going in life and it just it feels very good so anyways getting into this episode I love when I start decide to do a long uh winded intro when this is about to be a long episode but anyways we're gonna get into the q and I told you guys to get deep with me I really wanted to connect with you guys because I feel like I just love those q and A's when they're really we get into the nitty-gritty I feel like we're speaking heart to heart soul to soul um I just love those so let's get right into it Okay, I think I'm actually going to start with some more like general lighthearted questions just for us to kind of warm up to the Q&A. So first one, this is actually a fitness question. Do you still stay active on rest days? I do, but I don't have like a step goal anymore. I'm not super like, I don't know. I've been in like a super just flow period with my fitness lately. I haven't been very strict at all, but I just like I go for walks because I enjoy going for walks. So like today and yesterday, I actually might work out today, but I didn't work out yesterday and I just went on a long walk simply because I felt like it. So like overall, I do feel like I live a generally active lifestyle just because my hobbies, like that's the things that I like to do. Like my things that I like to do, I'm like, let's go on a hike. Let's go swim at the lake. Let's go wake surf. Let's go do like something like, I don't know. I feel like I, I like to do activities. So I find myself being active, even though it's unintentional, I guess. What are your favorite sources of healthy fats? I love me some avocados and honestly, I've been having a lot of animal fat. So like I'll have basically like 85, 15 ground beef or steaks have been honestly big contributors to my fat intake lately or salmon. I love salmon. So that healthy fat and fish. And then I, of course, I love me some olive oil. I'm Italian. I'll use some coconut oil as well. I haven't been really eating a ton of peanut butter lately or nuts, but yeah, I would mainly say my fats are coming from like avocados, animal proteins, and then some oils. Biggest wellness slash health tips. I'm just going to ramble some off that I think have helped me tenfold and helps with my mental health. Number one, first thing that's coming to me, get the freak outside. Like, I just don't want to hear it. Especially so many of us are working inside all day long. Like we are not meant to be inside buildings our whole life. Like even if it's just 10 minutes, if you can eat your lunch outside, if you can go for a 10 minute walk at lunch, if you can go for a 10 minute walk before work, after work, just get outside. If you can eat your dinner outside, like even like just try to get outside as much as you can. It helps so much with your mental health and just physiologically, like we are animals at the end of the day and it does trigger, it It gives us just like a different sense of satisfaction being outside. Number two, no phone in the morning this I've been way too lax on this with myself and I want to become stricter with it again no phone in the morning it helps me so much because it also just helps me kind of make my own game plan in the day and just kind of I almost want to say like seal my own energy before I like let all these other people into my energy via email text messaging social media all that sort of stuff it like helps me decide how I want to show up for the day first crucial I find I am so much more successful productive happier when I do not start my day on the phone and then it also helps me not pick up the phone as much also throughout the day. Three, some sort of mindfulness, stillness, self-reflection, some sort of practice to help you gain more awareness, whether it's you thinking about the things that you're thinking about, journaling, meditating, going for a nature walk, like anything for you to allow yourself to have introspective introspection, reflection. It's so imperative and we have so much distraction in our day and age. And I think that 
the world would be so much more of a better place if we actually took time to connect with ourselves. Another thing, it's not really like an active like wellness habit that you may think of, but living authentically, living in alignment with your truth, your desires, who you are, that's when you can live in a place of non-contradiction and that's when you can live just fully, passionately, and you're going to feel so much more grounded and centered because you are actually in alignment with your true self. Again, I think that's a huge source of people's unhappiness and lack of passion, fulfillment, direction, because they aren't living in alignment with their true authenticity. They're not doing things. They're not saying things. They're not living in a way that is true to them. Next thing, I'm really going off on all these. These could be in this own podcast. Last thing I'm going to say, because I could go on and on, but I'm also going to say high protein intake to bring something nutritional in here. Eating high protein is so important, not only for benefiting your body composition, gaining strength in the gym, all that sort of stuff, but it helps so much with hunger, craving, actual satiation, like making you feel so much more nourished, stronger, eating the actual amount of protein that your body needs, which is more than you may think is genuinely life-changing. Next question is actually by one of the girls who was in my Costa Rica retreat, my second wave. Shout out, Jordan. She said she asked how to deal with a self-inflicted struggle slash sacrifice that will eventually lead to a desired outcome. I love this. She's essentially asking, like, how are you supposed to deal with just like the challenge of having to sacrifice things now, maybe missing out on things now for the benefit of future you? I think this is such an imperative honestly concept when it comes to success like just being very honest and transparent with you like I definitely have my very like intuitive spiritual side but I also have my very disciplined clear-cut kind of binary side of me that's just like you're either doing it or you're not and I think the sooner that you can just kind of accept the concept that you're going to have to get uncomfortable now to be comfortable later. That's where you're really going to find success because most things take time to cultivate, to build. Really nothing happens overnight and you need to stay true to the course. And it's like the same thing. It's like if you want to achieve your fat loss goal, you can't do that a couple times and then on the third day be like oh my friends all want to go out and have like a big party pizza wings and go out drinking you can't expect to then go do that and still be able to have your still be able to achieve your goal so that's kind of an example of like needing to sacrifice now of I guess not sacrificing now that would inhibit you from accomplishing your goal especially uh, excuse me of course considering that you're making that decision over and over again of course one time isn't going to kill your progress but you just have to understand anything worth having or anything that you need to to put time in to create takes sacrifice. And that's just like really a law of the universe. And my dad always says pay now or pay later. And I know it seems like it's, it's shitty, but I don't ever really see it like that much anymore because I'm so dead set on anything everything that I'm working towards now that I don't have in this very moment that I may be quote unquote sacrificing for like today, it's a Sunday. I'm sitting here recording my podcast. I'm editing my podcast. This is taking hours of my weekend, right? I could be going for a hike. I could be just doing something that I may see more as quote unquote fun or whatever the case may be. But at the end of the day, I know that's temporary gratification. And of course, I'm not saying don't ever do those things. Those things are so important to fill up your cup. But at the end of the day, like you have to stay the course of doing things that even you don't feel like doing now because that's the only way that you're going to get to where you want to be in the future. There's also a great quote that I will never forget it. My brother wrote it down on a piece of paper and it was in our home gym back in New York and it said, the greats do what they're supposed to do even when they don't feel like it. The greats do what they're supposed to do even when they don't feel like it. And I know that that sounds drab or whatever but like it just is kind of the truth like no one ever accomplished anything great by doing it when they felt like it like it, it's just the truth and you don't need to really see it as like this hard you know really drab process like it's you just being devoted to your craft and with devotion like you being devoted to your goals and with devotion simply comes sacrifice because you can't be truly devoted to one thing if you're choosing everything it's like making me think of the quote a friend to all is a friend to none like you need to assert and declare your loyalty to your goal through devotion and stick with it. And the thing is, is like, I know it seems like a shitty now. You want to go out with your friends. You want to spend money on this trip. You don't want to save your money. Like you want to do fun things with it instead. You want to buy these new sneakers. But it's like all those things are just simply temporary. And so you need to kind of think of it as like this sacrifice is going to pay off 
for way longer. It's going to bring me so much joy, more satisfaction than me buying this pair of shoes right now. Ooh, it's kind of moody vibes. It's raining. Except I feel bad. My dad's on his bike. Uh oh. I might get a call from him soon to pick him up. Next question. Healing from past relationship trauma and feeling like a burden to my current love. Any advice? Ooh, this is a really, really real concept. I'm not going to lie. I have two kind of sides to this, I feel like, because of course it takes two in a relationship. I do feel like healing from your past relationship trauma, like I do feel like that is your job. Um, I do think that is something that you need to take full accountability for, responsibility for, and you need to continuously be putting in the work to help rewrite any narratives that you've adopted, the toxic narratives that you've adopted from past relationships. It's your job to re work on releasing your trauma. And most importantly, it's your job to not project your trauma on your current partner. You need to understand that your current partner did not hurt you the way that your past partner did. So there's really no need to carry that past trauma and project it onto them. I'm honestly going through this with someone in my life who was dealing with this with someone they were with. It's not your partner's responsibility to basically just be at the wrath of your projection of past trauma. Now, on the contrary, I do still fully believe you can fully that like you can work on healing in a relationship. I do believe that you can do that with a partner. I don't think you need to be completely alone. And thirdly, I also believe that yes, your partner should be supporting you in this healing journey, even though he can't do it for you. There's ways that he can help. There's ways he can assist. He could be understanding he or she. Um, they can be understanding. They could be patient with you. If you are acting from triggers or acting from past wounds, that those are all ways that they can support you. But at the end of the day, like you just you really have to do your own work to try to work through these traumas. And I just feel like my biggest piece of advice is to please do your best to not project it on your partner because those are really when I feel like, especially my experience and hearing friends and things like that, that's usually when you tend to push your partner away, unfortunately. So I would just do what you can to maintain your awareness. And th if things are making you uncomfortable or triggers are coming up, please talk to your current partner about it. Let them know that this is triggering you, why it's triggering you. And even talk about where it's stemming from in your past relationship. Like be very open with your partner of saying, my ex did this, which made me feel this. And that's why I'm doing this to you. And like, especially if your current partner has the correct headspace in place, like that shouldn't create any problems that you're bringing up your past relationship. Like that should, if anything, give you both clarity of where these things are stemming from. So then you can rewrite those narratives and correct those things together and heal from it together. I just so know how real this is. And it's so important to heal from past relationship trauma, specifically so that that past trauma and those past issues in your relationship don't repeat itself. Next one, my man isn't into self-development at all. He can game for hours, don't know his values, IDK if he's the one. Listen, I think these are kind of, this is I feel like when I read this, it was like one of those things where you're just kind of bound to, like this, I just feel like you're growing at different rates. You know, he clearly has different priorities and that's not to say that he can't ever come into that. You know, I would say to maybe invite him to do personal development things with you, encourage him to do so, not like mothering him or anything like that or feeling like he's forced to do things, but maybe like openly invite him to do whatever self personal development practices that you enjoy doing. Maybe you can put on a podcast together when you guys are driving in the car. Not going to lie. I kind of did that with my boyfriend. I, I was already had listened to a pot. Like I started a podcast when I was walking. He's not really one to listen to podcasts. And when we got in the car, it really did like on its own started playing. Cause it just like hooked up to the Bluetooth. And I was like, Ooh, should I change it to music? And I was like, nah, like let's, let's have him listen to it too. So, but just like little things like that and just kind of see how he reacts to it where it doesn't feel like this mothering forceful thing, but just kind of creating this environment open space a safe space for him to lean into it because I kind of I have two sides when I read this it's kind of a part of me is like you're growing you're like you're on a different page than him like you know he can't be a cinder block to your foot like if it doesn't if you feel like he's kind of holding you back or he's not helping push you forward like move on you know to help yourself reach your full potential. But then the other part of me is kind of like, but also you could be the person to help open them up into the realm of personal development, you know, and like be that light for them. Because I do feel like it's one of those things that does take time, especially if it's like a new if you're trying to spark a new interest in some like someone, like sometimes it takes time and sometimes it takes them just being around you, like you leading by example will help to slowly spark their own interest and have it be something that turns out to be intrinsic. So it's something that they actually truly have a passion for and something they want to continue on their own rather only doing it because you're telling them to do it. 
You know what I mean? So I guess all in all, my final piece of advice for this would be to try to invite him to do things with to work on himself with you, whether that's going to the gym, maybe you guys can literally read a book together, like do a book club. I'm not kidding. Or like, yes, do the podcast in the car, whatever the case may be, go to the gym together and see if he kind of takes that bait, but like do an honest try. Like don't do it like two times. Be like, see, he doesn't care. And this is it. Like give him time um, and try to do it consistently and see if he'll ever, you know, show any interest that he will kind of improve. But if you do truly feel like he's someone that is holding you back in some way and it's been a while and you just feel it in your soul that it's not it, then you got to listen to that soul pull. How can I stay consistent with a workout plan, including the days the gym is full? Non-negotiable, sister. You just got to listen. I feel like I really drilled this into myself during college where I literally penciled in my gym sessions just like it was a class. I scheduled out my classes, whatever classes I got, whatever time my classes were. And I literally said, okay, I'm going to the gym after econ. I'm going to the gym after supply chain. And I would literally write it in my schedule. Like when you print out your class schedule and I would put it in there and it just is truly a non-negotiable. It's not like, oh, if I get around to it, if I get time, because you will always find, you will create the time for things that need to be done. And it's crazy when Once you make that just binary, like you're either doing it or you're not doing it, it's insane because it just makes you be like, oh, there's no, there's kind of no other option. It's just like you, you're either showing up, you're either committed or you're not is what I'm saying when I say make it binary. And so it's like, if you're just not doing it, if you're not consistent, clearly it's not a priority and it's not something that's important to you. So it's like, you have to simply just declare it that this is what's happening. And that like kind of embodiment of it, that declaration is what really will help you stay devoted. And I feel like when I'm really strict on myself where I'm like, the answer is either freaking yes or no. And if you choose no, you're taking yourself out of the game. So then of course my answer ends up being yes. When I say like, okay, my answer is yes. So my only next thing to do is simply take action. You have to do it. There's no way fans or butts. Like that's when I feel like I'm the most productive and I make the most progress because I kind of just don't give myself the option and also do things as I also just read the book Atomic Habits. I would highly recommend that one. Um, I forget who, J- James Clear. Yes, that's the author. James Clear, Atomic Habits. And he basically, it's a big book about how to, not a big book, but it's a book about how to just like get consistent with your habits and how to break bad habits, form good ones. And one of the main things that he talked about in the book, one of the things was just how important it is to make your habits super, basically just like easily accessible. So like lay out your water bottle, lay out your gym clothes, have your gym bag already packed. So it's so easy easy. There's the path of least resistance to carry out the habit when it comes time to make the decision. Like the willpower, he also said in the book that like your willpower is something that gets fatigued, right? It's like a muscle, like eventually it's going to get fatigued. So if you constantly have to really dig deep in your willpower and jump through all all these hoops to make the the original goals you set out for the day happen and come through completion. Like eventually by the end of the day, it's going to get hard to stick with those things. So you want to do everything that you can to make your habits be easy, have a reward system for it, have it be attractive. Like you want to do what you can to make your habits seem easy easy, seamless to be able to get them done. So have your gym bag packed. Maybe you have like your favorite treat or something after the gym, like have it be something semi, you know, that's also in alignment with your goals. Like maybe you love a certain, I don't know, like the mini ice cream cones that I love from um, Trader Joe's, like have that be like, oh, once I'm done with my workout, I'm able to do that or any, any little reward system that you have, or after this, I get to do my, I get to have a bubble bath or anything, you know, like having those little reward systems as well also will help to keep you consistent. Or maybe if you're like, I went to the gym all three days this week, like this means I can go to the mall or I don't know, I hit all my workouts this week. This means I'm, excuse me, this month, I'm going to buy a new workout fit this month. You know, things like that create a little reward system for you that make it fun. Um, keep things interesting and keep things just enticing. How to protect your own energy, especially from other people's influence. Dog, this one, I really feel, I feel like I'm very sensitive to other people's energy too. And this was something I like really went through a strong period where I was like really trying to work on it because like, I, of course, don't ever want to be a victim to my environment. And that kind of comes with you being, if you're heavily influenced by the people around you, it's like you're kind of become a victim to your environment and like their own energy. So this is something that's been really important to me. First thing that really helps me is I really try to mentally like stay very present in the sense of like, I kind of want to say mental assertion. I don't even know if that's like a phrase, but like it's making sense to me. It's like, 
I'm very discerning in what I take on from people's interactions. So for example, if someone's like complaining to me and going on and on and on about something, I'm going to be very conscious with my mental thoughts, my mental reactions surrounding the situation. If I find myself you know, caring, because especially if it's something they don't even want advice on, like they're just complaining or whatever. It's like, I'm very particular to not let that pollute my mood. I try to really affirm to myself, like this is their reality, not mine. This is their energy, not mine. I don't need to carry this with me. I don't need to absorb this energy. Like I can still dictate my headspace. You know, it's just kind of like being extra present in my headspace and kind of in my energetic field when things like that are happening, because I find when you kind of quote, like uh, metaphorically let your guard down, that's when I feel like your energy is easily manipulated kind of, I want to say from other people or influenced by other people. So I try to really stay mentally present and kind of keep a little force field around me. I also do visualize that sometimes where I visualize like I, my own energy is like in a force field. And also coincidentally, I just watched a TikTok video and this girl, I love the way she described it. She essentially like in the morning, she, um, so she looks at herself in the mirror. She looks at herself dead in the eyes and she visualizes like her aura around her body. So like her energetic body, she visualizes herself like basically solidifying that glowing line all around like outlining her body to basically seal any of like the leaks or breaks in her energy and it just makes like a very solid steady energy force field I guess around her and it just basically makes her energy much more stable and secure and like grounded in who she is rather than this like really easily manipulated vulnerable or like having all these leaks to like absorb other people's energy you know and I really loved that and that's something that I also want to do and I think it's something that's very fitting in this question specifically to also help you protect your energy from when you're around other people Ooh, next question I recently had a sports injury I feel like my relationship with food is now trash help okay I can relate to this because I broke my wrist two years ago now, which is crazy. There was a time where I, yeah, I couldn't really do much. And I think the biggest mindset shift that helped me rather than thinking like I'm sitting around doing nothing, like I don't need to be eating any food, like that toxic mindset. It it more so I was viewing food at that time as like, this is something my body needs to repair my bones, repair my tendons, my muscles. Like, I don't know, whatever your injury is, like you need the KCALs to repair your body right now, like literally, quite literally, like just the same reason why you would need to make sure you get your protein in after a tough workout to rebuild your muscle fibers. Like it's that on steroids because your body is literally broken. So it's like, don't think these calories are getting wasted and they're not doing anything because you think you're sitting on the couch all day. Like they are literally going in to repair your body and your body is also enduring definitely high stress with this in, um, injury physically and mentally. And that also is, is taking more calories. So like your body definitely needs calories during this time to heal, to process the stress and to actually help your body repair itself and recover. So that's the first thing, like, please, the last thing your body needs is to go into a freaking calorie deficit. Like right now, like that, I can promise you it's so important. So really try to keep that at the forefront. Like every time you're eating, you're getting one step closer to recovering because you're helping give your body basically the tools to repair all those little tears or the breaks or whatever that's happening in your body. And also please remember, dude, like you're still burning calories, whether you're sitting on the couch all day long, breathing, you're thinking everything, the, di- the digestion, like everything within your body still burns calories, even if you were doing nothing all day. So like just because you aren't able to do your workout five times a week, like that does not mean that you're not burning calories all the other days of the week. So it's like, I promise, even if you feel like you're sitting on the couch all day, you still need food. You deserve food. Your body needs food. And with that, like I said, your body is truly repairing. So try not to think too far deep in it. I think we also flip out and think our bodies, like if you don't work out for however long, your body's just going to go to absolutely nothing. Like there's been studies that have been done that it would take a, honestly a pretty long time with absolutely no stimulation on your muscles to actually create like significant muscle atrophy atrophy like you your body is smarter than you think muscle memory is real and it doesn't just like you don't just like disintegrate overnight or you don't just gain a bunch of weight overnight like our bodies are really brilliant and they are way more resilient than you think how to stop feeling stuck and finding enjoyment in life again I love this question because I feel like I go through waves of this now I'm gonna sound like a broken record 
gratitude, 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 gratitude. That's like the biggest thing to help me find enjoyment in life again. It makes me excited. It gives me the spark. It makes me be like, wait, holy crap. There actually is so much to live for. Gratitude has changed my life. I don't know. I literally couldn't even tell you. I don't think my quality of life would be a quarter of what it is now if I never discovered and truly felt what gratitude means and feels like. Start by writing a gratitude list every single day. When you're driving the car and you're like, wow, I feel so stuck. You know when you're driving and you're just like, autopilot like you're pretty much unconscious and you're like there's nothing like lighting you up sometimes I catch myself and I'm like oh my gosh I snap out of it and I just start listing out loud what I'm grateful for I'm grateful for that I there's blue sky today I woke up I'm grateful that I had a great breakfast today I'm thankful that I have a car to be driving right now I'm so thankful that I'm able-bodied I'm so thankful that I can be completely independent that I was able to get myself in this car I'm thankful that I'm able to drive I'm thankful I'm in the country where I'm in a country where I'm able to drive I'm thankful that I'm safe today I'm thankful that I was in a, in a room where I was able to have a very safe, peaceful, comfortable night of sleep. Like there are so many things in our day to day, you guys that are literally worth everything, worth everything. And we don't even pay any mind. We don't even know how grateful we are. Like for the things that seem so small, they're huge. Like, could you imagine? And I, cause I guarantee so many listening don't even realize, like, could you imagine if you couldn't even get a restful night of sleep because you lived in a town in a home somewhere that was so chaotic and so unsafe that you just didn't even you weren't even able to relax and get a thorough night's sleep for the night like do you know what I'm saying like and there's people that are so and I'm not trying to gaslight anyone or take anyone's pain away from them I know pain is pain I'm just using this again for example like because theoretically you know usually when people are struggling with a lot of anxiety or a lot of depression it's like they physically can't get out of bed and they just want to kind of mope and just be in bed all day and it's like and they feel like you know there's nothing to live for they don't have a spark I'm like even the fact that you have a safe space to lay in bed all day like you know how much of a privilege that is and like no one even thinks about that you know what I mean like when you go you get up and go to work it's like you get up out of bed like it's it's like nothing or it's like that is such 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 a privilege to be in a safe space and be able to like comfortably be able to get sleep that you don't need to freaking sleep outside that you don't need to be in in a town where there's like you're risking someone basically kidnapping you in the middle of the night because you're outside like I'm going to the extremes but it just is like there's so many things that are that we are so blessed to have that we just completely overlook and it's like we keep thinking like because we don't make two hundred thousand dollars a year or we don't drive our dream car or we don't live on vacation every day that there's like nothing to enjoy in life it's like the biggest blessings of everything that mean the most we truly all have access to for the most part like for you listening you're definitely privileged enough if you have a smartphone to be listening to me we most likely share the same foundational privileges of waking up with a roof over our head having clean water having access to food having some sense of loved ones every day having peace and quiet for you to be able to drive in your car hell even if you need to take public transportation we all know you have headphones to be able to put in and 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 listen to music and go into a safe escape it's like all these things are just very precious yes simplicities but they bring us so much peace and comfort in life which I think are truly some of the biggest blessings so my biggest tip for finding enjoyment in life again it's like remember just the miracles that are happening around us like the fact that there's water that falls from the sky the fact that there's things that grow from the ground the fact that our food can grow from a freaking bush the fact that leaves on the colors of leaves on trees change colors depending on the time of year the fact that there's summer on one side of the world and on the other half of the other hemisphere it's winter it's like there's so many insane miracles that are going on and it's like when you just like truly take the time to recognize and see the beauty of it it's like you can't help but appreciate it that gives you so much more excitement and I feel like tips for feeling stuck I would say stay close to things that make you happy even if they don't seem like they're productive for example I find weird joy like I do love going longboarding I like to go to the park and swing on the swing like little things like that are going for hikes that maybe don't seem like in like um productive those things that like just give me an outlet and make me feel happy and they're weirdly satisfying to me like those things always give me a breath of fresh air to be able to think clearly honestly and to remember the options I guess that I do have in life and it just kind of gives me a second and then when I'm like in a happier headspace from those things I think more optimistic and then that makes me be in a more of a solution-based mindset to figure out where I want to go from here rather than feeling constantly stuck you know what I mean because I feel like when you feel stuck you're usually not doing anything you're scrolling on your phone you're watching tv like you need to do something that inspires you right like I said going outside 
knitting, coloring, painting, listening to music, like do something that inspires you. And I feel like that helps to give you kind of that like spark that you're needing to essentially jump out of bed and like figure out how to move forward and how to live a life that you want to live. Next one, moving on after a breakup when it's mutual but heartbreaking still. Girl, I feel you on this. I went through this. This is definitely never easy. I do feel like it's easier to move on from people when there is quote unquote like something bad that happened in the relationship or, or like something kind of dramatic that happened. So you know for sure like why it wasn't working. You know what I mean? I feel like it's easier to move on from that. But I would just say like, A, of course, as always, give yourself time to just mourn you know, that you guys aren't in each other's life in the same way anymore. But I think the biggest thing that helped me was just honoring the era that my partner at the time and I were in and letting it go to rest and understanding like people come into your life for a reason, a season or a lifetime and just trust that it was clearly for a season and be thankful that you can still look at this person fondly and not have something really dramatic happen to taint the relationship. Like when you're really living in love, you can keep your heart open, right? No matter what. And there's a quote that says, I recently heard it too. It was like, love doesn't hurt. It's the absence of love that does. And so it's like, if you can really keep your heart open and keep living in love and knowing that everything that happened was for the greatest good of the both of you, like that's when I feel like when you can still look at the relationship with fond eyes and be able to detach from the relationship and be able to honor and have it lay to rest in its era, like respectfully. Do you know what I mean? I feel like what makes it hard, you know what I mean, to move on after these breakups is because we still have this attachment and where there's attachment, there is ego. It's just how it is. So it's like, if you're in your ego, right, you can't really be living in true love. There's a very big difference between true higher self you know, conscious love and egoic love and where these egoic love is where you have this attachment where you feel like I need them to be mine, right? Like I need them to be mine right now. I need them to be in a relationship with me. Like that's like your ego talking. So that's what I'm trying to say. Like when you're living in love, that's when you can truly detach and still be able to look at this relationship and this era fondly and be able to honor it and love it from afar, from a distance. And I feel like that's when you know it's true or higher consciousness love when you can still feel that and you don't need that egoic gratification of having them be in your immediate reality of you or, or you needing to have this theoretical tie to them by being in a relationship to them or having them be in your everyday like when you can still be at peace and still send love from afar that's how you know you're loving from your higher self here we go not being into drinking going out to clubs etc while other friends do it doesn't call me let me be your advocate okay that's something that does not call me either and I just want to say this was such a big I struggle with this so much in college. Like my first year of college, I never ever drank. Granted, I was way strict on just every year of my life. I don't think that that necessarily is the way you have to go. But then sophomore year, I completely flipped, flipped a switch because I had made like no friends freshman year of college. And I went to freaking Penn State where the only thing to do was to literally drink, whether that was in a freaking frat house or a tailgate. That's like the only thing there is Greek life tailgating and drinking, literally. So I eventually drank the Kool-Aid. No pun intended. No, but... I, yes, yeah, so then I started really heavily drinking like, uh, no, excuse me, sophomore year and first semester of junior year, because that was the only way for me to be in a social setting. And I don't necessarily regret it, even though it did bring me way other ish, other issues. Right. But it did bring me like, I just still don't regret it, obviously, because I met people through it and it just was an experience. Of course, I don't really regret anything, but I just want to say like, don't make, don't let that make you feel like you have to not be true to yourself just to like, don't feel like you need to compromise yourself. This what I'm trying to say for the sake of other people like don't feel like you need to compromise your values your desires to make other people happy or whatever and like trust that you will find your people like now I have a circle where that's not what we do at all <laughs> like on you know that's not like our main form of entertainment every now and then I like to go out and drink just because I like to go dance in like clubs but that's literally it so I would just say you know, there's nothing wrong with you for being that way. I am truly the exact same way, especially when you're goal oriented or you're into health and fitness. Like it's totally okay. Even now, a lot of my high school friends, it's like their familial norm to just drink. And it's like, I still just don't like if there is times when we go out to dinner, all of us and like they want to get a casual drink. I, I'm never going to be a casual drinker. I'm never going to order a glass of wine at dinner. 
excuse me. Um, and they just have accepted that they know that that's who I am now and they respect that. So you also need to trust that like your friends should be respecting your boundaries. You need to stay true in your boundary with it. You need to not feel ashamed for when you do or when you do not want to drink and trust that you will definitely find your people with your same interest who don't want to just go out and party as the only thing to do to hang out. Okay. I'm going to call myself out here on this one. <laughs> because why the hell not? Someone asked moving in to a shared accommodation with a roommate, any tips on creating good vibes and making friends? Listen, I'm not the person to ask. I'm just going to say I'm not the person to ask on this. Just full awareness. I'm not someone that does well with roommates. I'm just not. I have such a hard, huge piece of my personality that's like hermit mode. I need like I'm not someone who wants to stay up and like chit chat at 10 p.m. Like I just don't. There's times where I'm like I just my social battery is done and where I just don't want to talk. And there's times where roommates roommates take that personally. And it's just like it's just not the vibe for me. So I wish I could give you advice. <laughs> I'm not trying to make this sound like doomsday either. I'm sure it's going to be great. I know so many people love living with roommates. I just feel like if you want to learn something about me, I'm not someone that does well with roommates. I need to decompress at the end of the day. I don't want to talk to anyone in the morning when I wake wake up not because I'm in a bad mood like I just like to recalibrate especially if it's like if I were to live with a friend we would have to be very close where they would know me well enough to be like I can't you know what I mean I couldn't like live with someone who I just met three months ago and they're kind of not in their power and they're not into personal development and like they don't know how to collect their energy because I could not be able to be around their array energy I guess and like constantly having to put a force field up around my energy to make sure I don't absorb them. And that makes sense. I'm like very, I'm someone who's very, I feel like I do operate best when I'm alone. And so I really need my living space to at least come back to, to recuperate. And I do live with my brother, but like siblings don't count. I feel like in a way, give or take, but also we have enough space between us and he's quiet. Like I am like, he, it just, we work, but anyways, okay, moving on how to deal with anxiety about big changes coming. I call it anticipation anxiety. Okay. This is so fascinating because the body actually doesn't the same like, um, neurological, um, activations that happen when you are nervous or like fearful, I, mean, I don't know, nerve, like fearful, but like when you're nervous and like anxious, the same pathways of that are lit up when you are excited. So your body physiologically doesn't really know the difference, the clear difference between feeling excited and feeling nervous. So anytime you're feeling like anxious or nervous, like just do what you can to turn that into excitement. There's also a great quote that I freaking love. It says, replace the fear of the unknown with curiosity, replace the fear of the unknown with curiosity curiosity. I love that so much. So instead of feeling like anxious of like being in this anticipation era of like waiting for all these things to happen and just kind of going through hypotheticals of what may happen, whether it's good or bad, like just let that go and just simply remain open and curious and get excited that there's new opportunities that are coming in because it's kind of like a new chapter in the book. You know what I'm saying? Sometimes it also helps me when I really think of my life as a movie. Like sometimes we just get so, we take it so seriously where it's like, oh my God, my life's going to be doomed if I move here and I hate it it's like not really you can just move back or it's like there's going to be like some crazy stories that come from it or it's just like another there's you know it's just like a great it works for the plot you know what I mean it's just for the plot of the movie like it just is something to to change things up and it's like what movie would you want to watch where the person just sits in their house all day long and like does nothing to like get them out of their comfort zone nothing that's exciting there's no changes like all this sort of stuff is like good for us like we are we are on this earth to enjoy to experience to freaking live life and it's like we're here to have fun you know what I mean so it's like switch things up take the risk do things that are new do things that maybe make you a little anxious but like do what you can to reframe that and just get excited about it because again, we're here to have fun. Like it's nothing that's that deep, that serious. And when you see it as such, I feel like you can, it kind of takes the edge off and you can just have more fun with what you're doing. Okay, girls, we have so much relationship stuff. Someone said she's struggling with self-worth and if she will ever get through this breakup, guy moved on easily. First thing I want to say is, I don't, I'm calling cap. Really, it's just, you don't, don't worry about the other guy. If I'm being honest, don't worry about your ex-boyfriend. First of all, you don't know for sure what he's thinking and feeling. I don't know if he straight up told you he moved on, which makes me feel like he more so definitely did it because it's like, why do you feel the need to just like, you just don't know if you're seeing things on social media, even if you post a picture with another girl, you have no idea internally 
if he actually emotionally has moved on from it or if he's just masking things, it's like, you don't know. And it's none of your business. So don't even worry about getting caught up in it. But I'm just saying, don't think like, don't let that get you all sad. Like, damn, he moved on so easily and I'm so hung up on him. Like he didn't care or whatever. Like it's not your business anymore. You're never going to know. So there's no need to go crazy over it either. If you're struggling with self-worth, especially after a breakup, affirmations, affirmations, affirmations. And I'm going to keep saying it because it works. Like you have to look and I want you guys to actually do it thoroughly. Like look at yourself in the mirror for, this is actually a new thing that I'm going to do if you want to do it with me. Cause it's kind of like habit stacking also from atomic habits by James clear, but habit stacking is essentially you do another habit either with or after a habit that you normally do in your life anyways. So I'm someone who really wants to get, you know, I love doing affirmations and affirmations in the mirror really, really work for me when I'm looking at myself in the eyeballs. It's like, I can feel my freaking cells up leveling and rejuvenating by speaking those things into existence. So I want to, when I'm brushing my teeth, which I know it make, doesn't make sense because there's toothbrushes in your mouth, but I'm still going to freaking do it. <laughs> but when I'm brushing my teeth and I'm already like looking in the mirror, I want to be going over the self-empowering affirmations. So join on me on that if you want. But like that helps so much with my self-worth. Also, another great action step for you guys listening. If you want to make a list of all the things that you love about yourself, things that are strengths that you have, make a freaking list. And I'm like, I don't, it's not conceited. Like it's so important to know your strengths, to appreciate your strengths and just to know who you are and to be proud of those things so like literally write down on a piece of paper all the things that like that you're proud of yourself for like all these amazing things about you and write that down and I feel like that's also really going to help you just realize your value and who you are as a person and all these amazing things that you have to help remind you of your self-worth and you need to also understand like we as humans like it is a birthright please get this into your head if you need to write this down on a piece of paper a sticky note and put it on your mirror self-worth is a birthright It is. You are inherently worthy because you are a soul. That's it. You don't need to do anything. You don't need to achieve anything. You don't need to be anything other than you. You are inherently worthy and deserving. It's true. And the sooner you realize that, just the easier life really becomes and the more things will be able to flow through you and just the less blocks you'll experience in life because you don't, it's everything already is, right? It's already in this moment. So you are already worthy just because you are a soul. And I know it's so hard in the beginning to get through a breakup, but you just have to give yourself time and patience and grace. And I know it's, it's hard. I mourned someone like literally a situationship for way longer than I would like to freaking admit truly over a year and a half. I don't think over a year and a half, but around a year and a half. And it just, sometimes it's just the way it is. You know what I mean? It's like, you gotta give yourself time, but no, it always, always, always will pass. Like, remember, don't get too caught up in identifying with these current feelings or feeling now. They will pass. They're temporary. Don't get too lost in the sauce. Like zoom out and understand every storm always, always passes. Ooh, can you speak candidly about birth control? I want to step into my sexual power, but I'm scared of getting pregnant earlier than what is best for my partner and I. I am so happy to talk about this very candidly because I feel like there were still taboo topics kind of with it. And I was like, I still am just kind of confused. So here's the lowdown. I I also want to try to keep this concise because there's no, yeah, okay. Oh my God, I didn't realize. Okay, I still have a lot of, we're not going to get through all the questions, obviously. But anyways, I thought I had less left than I do. So anyways, birth control. Here's the thing. You can only get pregnant. There's something called a fertile window. Class is in session. Okay, I honestly think I want to do a whole podcast episode on this. Of course, I'm no professional, but I've done a ton of freaking research on this. So you can only get pregnant for a certain amount of days within your cycle. So you cannot get pregnant every single day of the year. That is a falsity that we have all been taught in school or maybe have not been taught, whatever. So there's only technically you are really only fertile on your ovulation day, which is technically one day out of your whole entire cycle, which a healthy cycle can range anywhere from 24 days to like 30, 32 day cycle. Everyone is different. If you vary like plus or minus four days is a considered like a normal cycle. So You are only ovulating one day out of your whole entire cycle. Let's just stick with 28 days because it's easy. Okay. Now with that, that means an egg is getting dropped from your ovaries and it basically is kind of chilling. I don't really know where I guess like in your uterus waiting to get fertilized by sperm. Obviously that egg is only going to be sitting in there for like 24 ish hours. And then it essentially just dies and disintegrates into your uterus. And it's part of what you shed when you actually menstruate throughout your period. So 
when you start your period the first day of a bleed, that is technically day one of your cycle. That's when your cycle when your cycle actually begins. So you ovulate pretty much generally right in the middle of your cycle. But here's the caveat. Sperm can actually live in your uterus for up to five days. So that's why they more so call it an ovulation, a fertile window, I should say. So because so let's say you ovulate on day 13, but you guys had sex and he had finished in you and it was on day nine, there's still a chance that that sperm is going to be living just chilling literally within your uterus. And then when the egg drops, you there's still a chance to get pregnant. So that's like really the biggest thing that you need to understand. But outside of that fertile window, like literally the pH balance in your uterus literally alters. So that sperm literally can't, it's not like prosperous for sperm. It literally can't survive really in your uterus. So it's really amazing if you really go into it, how divine everything needs to be to actually create a freaking baby. So for me, I track my cycle using um, the fertility awareness method, which I essentially am like, um, I take my basal body temperature. So first thing in the morning, I have a thermometer. I take my temperature before I get out of bed, before I do anything. You can really honestly kind of want to do it when you're half asleep. If you have an aura ring, which I'm really thinking of getting, it does it for you, which sounds amazing. Um, and then basically based off your body temperature, it predicts when you ovulate because when there's a spike, like a rise in your body temperature, that's when your body is ovulating. So that's what you need to be careful of. However, you also need to understand it's really only possible to get pregnant if, you know, it is finished within you to try to keep this PG-13 a little bit. So other than that, there's not a way really for your, for sperm to get in you unless of course there's something called pre-cum, but even that is still avoidable. There's really no way to get pregnant unless he's like fully finishing the deed within you, or it doesn't even have to be full, fully, but like if he's finishing within you in some sense. So basically I'd recommend taking your basal body temperature and then you essentially those days where you're in your ovulation window, there's other birth control methods that you can use. Sometimes my partner and I will completely just abstain or we'll do things orally or we will um, obviously use a condom or pull out. Like there's just so many different things that you can do where it's not like completely finished. So all this sort of stuff that you can use but basically the moral of the story is like there's so many other ways to use birth control where you don't need to be scared every single day of your cycle like if you're really close to getting your period there's no like again I'm not this isn't medical advice but like it's very rare for you to be able to get pregnant like when you're supposed to get your period in three days it's just it's literally borderline just not possible so I say this just to give you um, more awareness to know that there is more to the story. And I just say this for you not to take this Bible, right. But like, have you take it and hopefully inspire you to look more into it and do more research because there's just more to it. And birth control isn't as scary as it needs to be. Everyone thinks that like, as soon as there's some sense of intercourse, like, boom, oh my gosh, am I pregnant? Like, no, there's, there's more things that come with it. And it's a little bit more complex and it's not as what much of a huge major risk as we all think it is as long as you're smart about it pretty much and as long as you use it actually properly the um effectiveness of the birth control pill is 93 percent with typical use and the effectiveness of i personally use natural cycles i haven't even used, said that and the effectiveness of natural cycles with typical use which is what i'm saying taking your basal body temperature is also 93 percent effective so it's like this this talk that like tracking your cycle isn't effective or it's still a huge risk like is truly just not true again considering you're actually using it correctly you can't say i'm going to use fertility awareness method and then like not track you know forget to take your body temperature five days not look where you're at in your cycle and on two days before you're ovulating you guys have sex to completion and say it didn't work right it does still work you just weren't using it at that point in time Ooh, how to know what voices in your head are your own oh my goodness I love this question I've never gotten this before I didn't even see this until just now okay oh here's the thing I feel like yes oh my god sorry this is such a good question I feel I've never even really thought about this before but I feel like there's a few different voices I feel like one there's like your higher self like your which I think your higher self is your true self like your higher self is your authentic self it's you before the trauma so I feel like there's your higher self slash authentic self and then you have your egoic self which that I don't feel like is you that is your past programmings that's trauma that's you know subconscious limiting beliefs from other people you've adopted from bullying from your parents from whatever and that's usually your negative self-talk so like that's such a great way to basically gaslight 
hate your negative self-talk and pull the plug from it and just be like, that's not real. That's not the truth. Like that's not your true self-talking. Like that's simply just the pain that you've endured in your life. At the end of the day, like any negative self-talk, self-learning beliefs, that's not truly you. That's your pain of your past talking. I love that. That's the first time I really ever said it like that. I think it's so true. That's the pain of your past talking, not your true self. Do I do a podcast episode on that? Maybe. But so I think that's so important. So anything that's like negative, self-limiting, mean to yourself, that's not you. That's your egoic voice. Anything that is feels true to you, that feels in alignment with your desires, that's self-serving, that's supportive, that's hopeful, that's expansive, that I think is your higher self. That's your higher self voice. And then the third one that I feel like comes into play is your intuition. And I think kind of intuition, yes, comes from your higher self, but I always feel like those are intuit like intuitional why can I speak intuitional downloads from just consciousness, whether that being from God, from the universe, from spirit guides, right? But I just feel like it's like it's source information that comes from you in your intuition. Um, so I guess I do kind of see intuition kind of separate from your higher self in a sense. But um, I feel like that for me when I have intuitional downloads or like source consciousness come through me, that just feels like it's so weird to explain. It's just like this inner knowing. I feel like when it's a voice in my head, it's very conversational. It's kind of more like, oh, maybe what ifs? It's like just conversational. And then I feel like when I get a download from source, it's it's certain. It's a declaration. It's like an inner knowing. It's like it just feels like I just read something from a book that was just like new foundational factual information, if that makes sense. It's just as like this inner knowing that comes in with a lot of clarity. There's not chatter around it. Rarely if I, yeah, that's a big thing too. Like usually there, there's noise around my authentic self-talk when it's like an intu intuitional download. It's just kind of a point blank sentence that's just very clear. There's no a bunch of clutter, chatter, noise around it. There's not a ton of like thoughts that are surrounding it. It's just very much so like even something super small when I'm meditating, it's like light polis like Palo Santo just like comes into my head. And that's like super like that's it. And I just am like, okay, thank you, Uni. Like I'll I'll start connecting with Palo Santo. Like super it's just it just seems factual is the best way for me to describe it. It's certain, it's a declaration. It's it's just this this inner knowing that kind of comes through with certainty. Have any idea of where you'd like to live in the future? Ugh, guys, so many I always get this question all the time. I don't even know why. But well, I guess because I always talk about moving and where I want to be because I'm very location dependent and weather dependent. But anyways, I I really don't know. I definitely feel like I want to live abroad for a hot segundo. I, Hawaii always calls me. We all know Hawaii always calls me. Obviously now is not a great time to be, you know, thinking of moving there or anything like that. So I don't, I just, I don't know. Nowhere on the mainland really calls me. I kind of have been thinking of Florida, I guess. Um, but yeah, I have no, I really don't know. I think when it comes to raising a family, I'm more open to being in a place where there's like seasons just because I want my children to be able to experience that. But like, I feel like in the immediate, you know, one to three, three to five years like I would love to live kind of in a summer year-round place I feel like I need to fully live out my tropics which I have like in two month spurts right from like when I was in Hawaii and Costa Rica and all that sort of stuff but I feel like I need a full I kind of want like a full year of surf life somewhere Ooh, how did connecting with locals from places you visited change your life ah what a great question I feel like without fail they've grounded me they've humbled me and they've made me obviously just be so much more cultured. Like, I don't know how they couldn't have done that. But I just feel like, I do feel like I'm a much more humbled and aware person because I know how other people live by meeting locals from other places. I think it's life-changing. I think it's one thing to go travel somewhere you know, with friends and experience a new place. But there's very difference between that sort of travel where you're in a, you know, you're vacationing. There's a difference between tra vacationing and traveling. And it's just true. And so I feel like for me, when I travel to these places and I live in these places and I meet people that are from there and I speak to them and I hear, I hear how they talk, I hear what they talk about, I hear how they live, I hear what their norms are. Like it humbles me so much and it's so expansive for me to see 
and hear how other people live and what their priorities are. And I feel like it's made me so much more open minded and has allowed me to kind of realize what matters and also reminds me that things are fully subjective. And I feel like that's been a very freeing thing with traveling is that there's more than one way to live because I feel like sometimes in the US we get caught up on like what we should be doing, how we should be doing it. And when you travel and you meet these people from all over the world, it's like they don't even freaking talk about what their jobs are with their people every single day. It's like some people are friends with people and they have no even idea what they do with their job because it's just not important. So it's just like, I just feel like it reminds me that we can't get so lost in what we as a society in the US have been taught to value. Like there's just so many things are subjective and you are free to live as you please and prioritize and value things as you please. And like that is up to your discernment and you don't have to just like follow the norm if it doesn't feel right to you. Another similar question to the one about where you want to live. She said, do you know where you want to settle down? Do you even want to settle down somewhere? I do definitely want to settle down somewhere. I don't know if I come across as like this traveling bugs free spirit. A part of me really does like is that way. But I am also someone who loves like I'm definitely a homebody and I love to be able to have my space. The thing is that's kind of been frustrating because I've been living here in Utah for like coming up three years now, but then I've done right like extended stays in other countries and other areas and things like that. And so there's like certain things where I can't and like I'm still in a family home in Utah. I don't live on my own. So it's like there's certain things that I maybe like want to buy or want to like decorate for, but I just don't because I don't know where I'm going to be. Like it's also why I haven't bought a car. Like I still I use family cars because it's like I I just don't, I don't want to buy a car. And then let's say in three months, I'm like, actually, I want to go live in Bali for a year. It's like, I, it's just not really a liability that I need to take on right now. Cause I have other options, but like a part of me would love to be able to, you know, have my own space, have a car, like feel like I have a life set up. Like a part of it is like freeing to feel like I could pick up and go anywhere. And I don't know where I'm going to be in a year from now. Cause things could drastically change. Like part of that's freeing. But the other part of me is like overwhelmed by that because like I, it's, nice to kind of have roots but I kind of just be I'm able to see where my family is as my roots you know what I mean Ooh, hi sweet girl hello she said got any advice for working on not falling victim to your environment I am working on this right now literally on my walk this morning I was like really trying to get back in there because sometimes I get so caught up in what my externals is showing me and that's then how my mood is right if I'm like don't feel successful in certain things and I'm like see this is this this means I'm unsuccessful and so then I feel unsuccessful on the inside or like see this is how I want it to be so then I feel unhappy on the inside I was literally just thinking of this this morning but the kicker is that we think that like those external things are what's triggering us to feel this way on the inside but it's the fact that we're feeling this way on the inside that's making the reality look like that on the outside and it's true and true because also to continue it's everything's a feedback loop anything that you believe is it's self-serving it's a feedback loop because that's how the brain works it consciously chooses picks out things to confirm your narrative that's literally just how the brain works so it's like when you are in constantly victim to your environment so it's like I see these things and I'm like see this means I'm unsuccessful then I feel unsuccessful and then I continue how you feel is what dictates your thoughts or vice versa, whatever. And then that dictates your actions that you take, which then make up your life. So if I'm feeling unsuccessful, that's going to cause a lack of action. Uh, It's going to dictate the way I'm showing up with certain things. And that's going to affect my success. So it's like, if I'm feeling really low, if I feel like I'm not special, if I feel unsuccessful, like I don't have anything to offer, that's going to show up in my work, whether that's how much I'm working, the quality of my work, how I'm working, things like that, which is then contributing to me being unsuccessful. So it's this feedback loop, right? So it's like, you have to understand if you want to see a change, you need to make a change. If you want to move, like if you want different, you need to move different, right? So it's like, you need to understand it starts from within. So you have to do with everything in your power. And this is kind of where that like delusional trend Like you have to, you have to understand that it starts within you first. So you need to say it, you need to declare it, you need to act on it now, even if your external reality isn't confirming your actions, your beliefs, your thoughts, right? Because you need to understand that eventually your external reality is going to catch up to it. And I also heard something one time that I love. It's like your reality now is a result of what you were doing three months from now. Cause you kind of need to understand this, I feel like this could be a whole other podcast episode. I also recently had this visualization because I was home in upstate New York and we went boating a lot. And um, I picture like when you're in a boat 
and you're driving, you know how there's like a wake or just like the ripples in the water. That is basically demonstrating the energy that we are all embodying, operating at every day. And so just like how a boat has a wake, like an after effect, it's kind of the same thing energetically. So like back to that, what I was saying, like where your life is now, it was where you like what you were doing three months ago. Like sometimes it takes a second for your reality to catch up with what you were doing because there is not all the time, but there can be a lag time just like there's like a wake in a boat that kind of like the the after effect of the ripples and even like when you go through and you're driving a boat with the wake there's still waves that like take a while to reach the edge of the shore when you're driving in the middle of the lake like there's still those kind of after effects of the ripples and that's kind of how I picture how your actions dictate your life like three months from now it like takes a second so you need to understand you need to start now internally to then see the effects on the outside of your reality and have that be demonstrated back to you so like for me, if I feel like I don't really love where I am right now, that's not something means that I did something yesterday that's where I am today. It's like this means I was some sort of shortcoming three months ago that I wasn't, you know, fulfilling my potential three months ago that's dictating where I am now. So it's like I need to switch my narrative, go inside first with why I'm so passionate about affirmations, journaling, um, meditating, because that's what allows me to choose how I want to feel now, which is then going to help me dictate and actually do my actions, which is then going to make me create my life. And that's what's going to allow me to actually dictate my reality instead of being victim to my environment. So that's so important. You have to understand, like you just have to focus on choosing the internals first. And it's like, you almost need to put on blinders. Like I think also like, because again, what I do with social media, it's like my there's so much quote unquote results that happen every day from like a like on a post comments, engagement, things like that, that I could see every day. And so that's why it's so important for me to in the morning, not even go on my phone and look at social media or for you look at your emails or look at progress reports for work, because it's like those numbers are going to basically tell you how you should be feeling about your success. But you need to understand you doing that is simply just you continuing to live within the cycle loop of your past results your past performances so if you want a different result of your performance you need to not be looking at those metrics because right those metrics came from things that you did in the past and if you want to change that for the future you need to get rid of those you need to put your blinders on and just completely focus on your input now how you're showing up now to then eventually create a different performance you know a better performance in the future so it starts now a huge thing for me when I'm trying to work on getting out of that victim mindset to my environment is like I don't even focus on any results I don't focus on any of the output I focus solely on the input what I'm doing to put the work in towards my goals I don't even look at my results I don't even look at the success that things I create, I just am so focused on the internal of the input, what I'm feeding myself and how I'm acting. And then that helps me really switch that and like put the ball back in my court. All right, you guys, I think I'm going to end it here because I can just keep going and my voice is getting tired. But anyways, um, I really appreciate you guys listening, uh, especially if you're at this point in the podcast, you guys are literally rock stars. Your ears have some endurance. I'll tell you that. I really appreciate you guys' company today. Siri, I don't want you. She's on, though. Um, anyways, if you did enjoy this podcast episode, don't forget to leave a little review. We have 460 freaking reviews, y'all. I keep looking at it because I just am really excited because I really want us to get to 500 reviews by the end of the year. It's a gold mine. So if you haven't already, it takes two seconds. Leave a little rating um, on Spotify or Apple Music. You can even leave like a written review if you want on Apple um, podcast. It's a way to support the podcast in a way that's completely free to you. If you've gotten any value from this podcast ever, I'd really appreciate it. It really helps this podcast reach more people and impact more lives. I also want to say I am hosting a retreat in Bali. Of course, always want to keep reminding you guys. So there's more information down below if you're feeling called. Um, you have the option to pay off your ticket with a payment plan if that's something that um, is worrying you right now, you can pay off your ticket either between six, 12 or 18 months, which I know is definitely a big help. If you have any questions about the retreat, please feel free to reach out to me. You can DM me or anything like that. And I'd be happy to get back to you. I'd love to have you. We still have seats available. I also have a fun little mini product that I've been working on. It's very small, but I have been something that it's a physical product that I'm going to be launching here in a couple of weeks. So stay tuned for that. Keep listening because I will be launching that, like I said, in a couple of weeks. I'm really excited about it. And to give you a hint, I had to work with a graphic designer for it. So thank you guys so much for watching or listening. I'm sending you guys so much love and I really hope you have an amazing week.
Peace out. You guys, I completely forgot to say the affirmation. I was sitting here editing and I was like, wait a second. Something's missing and it is the affirmation. I refuse to let you guys go a week without an affirmation. So this is what I had written down. I don't know why I completely just skipped over it. But the affirmation for this epi is I have all the tools I need to create my dream life. I have all the tools I need to create my dream life. That one came through during my walk yesterday when I recorded this. Anyways, thank you guys so much for listening. I'm sending you so much love and I hope you have an amazing week. Peace out.